Jeff, just looking at the film, what were some of your big takeaways from this uh, last game? Exactly what I thought uh, after the game was over, which usually it's not that way, right? Usually when the game's over, you think what you saw is not what you saw. But our kids gave the most amazing effort uh, like they always do. Uh, I've coached them now for, you know, third year. And other than one time, uh, I thought our kids always give an effort that's undescribable. I had so many of my coaching buddies that just, you know, they're starting to pay attention to us now. And they literally were like, man, y'all's effort jumps off the screen. Like it, it like comes through the screen. And I couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, our execution uh, was very much first game like. And that's on the head coach. And uh, I've got to get that cleaned up. Jeff, you, you took some of the blame or from all of the blame after the game. What specifically were you referring to? Well, it's all on me, right? Every bit of that. Uh, and I, I don't want to get too specific because what happens then, JJ, then assistant coaches start getting blamed, uh, then players start getting blamed. Uh, all that's on me. And there, there's so many details in the game. Uh, I'll be as vague as possible uh, so I don't give anybody up. But, you know, substitution errors, uh, having to burn timeouts when you don't need to because of formation and uh, technique of scheme of protection, um, technique defensively, uh, blitzes. And the, the problem when that was vague and specific at the same time is I don't want to give media – or my players that are listening to this or my coaches that watch this or coaches wives that watch this to think I'm throwing anybody under the bus. That's all on Jeff trailer. Cause I'm responsible for every bit of that. And I mean that I'm not, there's no false humility there. There's nobody trying to make anybody feel sorry for me. That's on me. That's my responsibility as the head coach to get that stuff taken care of. And it was not taken care of. Greg. Jeff, as you watched the offensive line performance back on the film, what were the major takeaways about how the group performed up front? Obviously, with the injury to Mikhail Hart, that put us at a distinct uh, disadvantage. I was so proud of Frankie, the way he went out there and competed. Frankie's a walk-on, pays for his own school that was going against a superior athlete, and Frankie battled his tail off. Uh, I thought Maka played a fantastic game. Um, I thought that Vinley for playing left tackle for the first time in his career did a, did a really good job. He had a, we, we had a few MAs there. Uh, we've got a lot of run game we've got to get cleaned up. Uh, you know, I expected more um, from that unit going into the game, but with the injury, uh, they, they did about as good as they could have. Uh, did we run the ball the way we wanted to? No. Are there some combos up front we got to get better at? Our running backs got to hug some stuff better. There's a, there's a lot to get better at. I just don't want to be, you know, too specific because, again, I don't I don't want to throw it. My, my players give me all they've got, right? And I, I just have to be careful how I want to be sensitive to what y'all's guys' jobs are, but at the same time I got to protect my, my coaches and my players as well after a – extremely, extremely tough loss on our program. What can you share about Makai Hart's status and how long he might be out? Uh, he'll be out for a significant amount of time. Does it still look like uh, Ernesto and Frankie will be the guys to look at at that position, or do you have other options you consider through this week? Uh, you know, Ernesto's trying to play through an injury. He did not – he gave me all he had. He just couldn't last. Uh, so – you know, I don't want to give Army too much, so we'll 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 it'll be either Frankie or Ernesto. Okay, Sam. Hey Jeff, uh, I'm curious. Just I know you talked on Saturday about the emotion uh, from this loss. Uh, how has your how have your guys handled it in the you know the day day and a half since? 
You know, I text my single digit guys and my leadership council about 1 a.m. And uh, I just told them how sorry I was because they, they did their part, right? We don't ever talk about winning and losing here. All we ever ask our players to do is to uphold our brand, our triangle. And it's my job as a head coach to use timeouts correctly, uh, make important decisions. And I, as a head coach, uh, failed those kids in that department. And um, those kids are fantastic, man. They they refused to let me take it. Uh, they each took their own share. They were all here on time and our meetings locked in. There's not a better group of kids in the country, man. They're the best. And I'm not sure if it came up or if you discussed it after the game on Saturday, but did you get or ask for any clarification about the time situation in the fourth quarter after the review where Houston had, had uh, I guess there was a review and then some time had run off the clock from where the initial knee was down. Did you get any explanation on that? You know, I don't, I don't watch the TV copy, so I don't know what, you know, is shown on TV, but I was doing my best to get my time back and they told me there's no way they could uh, because the ball, the clock would have never stopped anyway, was their explanation. And I'm like, yeah, but that extra 15 to 16 seconds of running around, they're like, by rule, you can't get that time back. That was the explanation the officials gave me. The it, Looking ahead to Army, uh, how, how – uh, I, I think you've touched on this before the season, but getting ready for this team in, in a short amount of time, what's the challenge there? I gave the analogy yesterday, you know, it's a – they're going to run the ball and it's going to be second and seven and we're going to be clapping and they're going to be clapping because they're going to be excited and we're going to be – we think we did good. Then they're going to be third and five and we're going to be clapping because we thought we did good on defense and their offense is going to be clapping. And then it's going to be like fourth and two and we're going to be clapping and they're still clapping. And then they're going to go for it. And it's either going to be a first down by about three inches or we stop them by about an inch. And you're going to get very few possessions on offense. And uh, you have to know what you're playing when you go into the game. Uh, we know we're going there. They're coming off of a tough loss to Coastal, who is a very good team. So you've got two really good programs that both pride themselves on playing very hard, uh, battling, uh, and trying to get their first win. So – that's what we're expecting. JJ? Jeff, looking back at it, did you guys have too many substitutions in the first game of the season? No. We had too many injuries on too many substitution packages, which hurt us for using our timeouts. But let's be honest. Those timeouts, you know, my kids went – the length of the field with no timeouts in about 20 seconds. So they bailed their coach out, right? I just felt bad as a coach. I couldn't do anything to help them. Uh, they bailed me out. And uh, there were other things in the game that I'm more disappointed in myself than that because my kids, as always, bailed me out of that situation, right? But defensively, we, we played as good as I've ever seen our kids play on defense. I, I, that's the best game I've seen us play against a team with that much talent. So for me to second guess uh, Coach Lepp and his plan and all those kids getting in the game, to play that many players, there's a reason our locker room stays the way it does. There's a reason our kids play that hard. Uh, it doesn't happen, J.J. It's a, it's a philosophy from the top down. Uh, I do understand your question. It's a fair question, especially being the first game of the year and that much emotion. But where is that line, J.J.? I mean, y'all know me well enough by now. We go in to win the game. Uh, I don't mind tough questions. They're fair. And, uh, but we, we go to win. I can make it simple for y'all. We can stay in 11 personnel every time. We can stay in base defense every time. We'll have no penalties and we'll get our ass kicked every Saturday. But y'all will be so proud of me because we have no penalties and we look so clean. Greg? Jeff, not to harp on this too much, but the, the 12 men on the field penalty that we talked about, was that just a case of potentially having a partner turner in position for a fourth down or what led to that, if there's anything you can point to? Yeah, it was fourth down. Uh, we, we, we went from a, uh, like a, a, a dime package 
to a base package. So when our punt returner and coach saw the mass substitution on defense, thought we were punting the football. It's inexcusable. I'm the head coach. It's on me. And I wanted to check in about uh, Demetrius Allen. Uh, obviously, we expected he might be in a position to potentially start, and I don't believe he was dressed for the game unless I missed him out there. Can you update us on his status at all? Uh, just some off-field situations. Uh, we hope to have Meech back soon. Sam? Uh, Jeff, I know you've said a lot over the years about Frank Harris and what he meant to this team. and all that, but how would you describe the the fight and, and the determination and performance that he had in, throughout throughout Saturday, but especially in French time? Kid's a winner. He's a winner. You know, no one feels worse about that game than Frank Harris. That's just the way Frank is, man. And uh, I put him in a bad position on that last play, and it's on that's on me against the head coach and. Um, or he'd have won the game for me. So, it, you know, you hate to say he's the heart and soul of our team because we have so many kids of the heart and soul of our team, right? How do you say that and not mention Dadrian Taylor? How do you say that and not say Trevor Harmonson? How do you say it and not say Maka, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's so many guys that are really the heart and soul of our team. Rashad Wills, we can keep Corey Mayfield. I mean, my, our kids just play so hard. And But, yeah, Frank is the leader, and he does a fantastic job, man. And, I'm blessed to have him. I mean, he played his tail off and just crushed. We didn't get it done for him. How, how much does that mean in, in crunch situations like that, in games like this where you need a little something extra? He, he's got it in the tank, clearly. How, how much does that mean to a team when it comes to belief and confidence and in, in games out? He's not the only one. I mean, if you go back and look at that drive, I, mean, I want you to watch how all those kids understand the situation, how all of them are. They were impressive, man. I mean, and you're right. He is the leader. But, man, I was so proud. of. Like, watch the Kari Franklin. He didn't He didn't have a catch on that drive. But watch him getting those kids lined up and watch him getting us get that ball clocked. There's so many good things on that video to teach off of. And, and, and you know, Frank, he's just like me. He'd be the first one to be giving the credit to everybody else. But Frank is the one to put the ball in there on those kids. And, man, what a great catch by Josh Cephas. And what a great catch by Oscar and uh, we're not going to minimize that, man. We're different in that aspect. We still give away Triangle Toughness Award. We had a lot of kids play fantastic, right? Uh, we celebrated those kids. There's a lot of great stuff on that video. There's a lot of great stuff. And we're, we're celebrating every one of those moments. Their job is to be true to the brand. My job is to call the timeouts, get the plays called correctly, get them in a position to win. I failed them. They did not fail me. Greg? Jeff, after the game, you said that this result would either split the locker room or it could bring you guys all closer together than ever before. Do you have sort of an early gauge on what direction that's heading? Uh, tighter than ever right now. But, man, we got we got some more wars to come, right? Uh, so, it's, it's it, man, this group, they're unbelievable. There are no problems. I'm talking – there's nobody happy now. It's a, it's a, it's a dark field house, man. I'm trying everything in my can power to get them up. But no one was late for treatment, for weights, for meetings, team meetings, special teams meeting. That's a hard video to watch now. That's hard. As an adult of 54 years old, 33 years of coaching, it's the hardest video I've ever had to watch. And uh, that one was painful. JJ? Jeff, you talked about the uh, play of the defense. What was your assessment on the offense and Will Stein's first game? I thought he did an unbelievable job. I mean, we did not execute, which is on me and him as well. Uh, but, man, for the situation, that was a really good defense now. That's a top ten defense in the country. And uh, we scored every time in the red zone. Uh, and crucial penalties, you know, and we did. We held. On the, on the completion to Zakari, we had a lot of untimely drops, and all that's on coaching. That's, you know, that's that's not on players. That's that's on coaching. And those those players are a reflection of me. And uh, but I thought he was calm, cool, and 
really proud of him and our entire staff. I mean, you have to understand how many, how many changes we've had since we've been here together. I mean, this, this is new special teams coordinators, new defensive coordinators, new offensive coordinators, and you guys haven't missed a blink. Y'all, y'all just get to keep watching good football, right? And uh, that's a lot of changing by a lot of men. And, uh, and we, we promote everybody within, right? So let's everybody think of all the job changes went into that first game. And uh, that's just part of a growing program with a lot of success. People steal your coordinators and you got to keep replacing them with young coaches. And as a head coach who's not young, I've, I've got to do a better job to help those guys. You guys on the defensive side were able to get a little pressure on on that quarterback. Were you happy? I know I know it was hard to get him down a few times, but there were some tackles for losses and a few sacks. Were you happy with that production? Yeah, you know, I, I even opened up my my old sneaky book that I write in, right? And I read it straight to y'all. Uh, I was so proud of Coach Lelp and their plan, how they got home so many times. I never watched. The entire game, I watched the rear end, the entire game because we were trying so hard uh, to reroute those great wide receivers. And, man, we just did such a fantastic job of doing that. Uh, and I just – I listened to my coaches like, we've got him, we've got him, a ah, hundred times, right? And now that I went back and watched the video, we got home so many times and just didn't get him down. And that's, again, on us. We've got to do a better job of that. Uh, but, yeah, I thought their plan was great. Our kids – there was, there was a few we just messed up on, but not many. Uh, we just – I meant when I told, you know, Greg, when they got the momentum, man, they're hard to beat. And they got it, man. We just weren't quite good enough to stop it once they got it. Man, and we're the ones that gave it to them, which is what's, what's so frustrating. I'll never live this one down. I'll never live this one down, JJ. This one will, this one will haunt me until I, until I hang it up. And staying on the defensive end there, you, you mentioned the play of the secondary. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about, you know, what you saw there? And, you know, it seemed like it, it's an improved unit. Oh, we're good. We, 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 got, a, we got a good group, man. Uh, we've got good corners. We've got good safeties. We've got good nickels. We've got good D linemen. We're, we're a good football team, right? Uh, we've got to get some offensive line issues cleaned up, uh, which I have the most confidence in the world in Matt Maddox and Kurt Trailer. And uh, and we got to stay healthy. We we got we got we can't lose any more kids. We got to stay healthy. If we can stay healthy, we got a really good football team. Losing, you know, Payne Bear and Makai Hart and Meach to start the season off. It's just hard to overcome three offensive tackles, especially losing Spencer. Uh, you know, that's four. And uh, but I am very proud of Vinley and Frankie. And when we get Ernesto back and we get Meach back and we get Payne back and we get Makai back, we're going to be ready to roll, boys. Hey, Sam, back to you. Jeff, you kind of mentioned the trying to get tuned down. What was your impression after playing against them? What what tune is is like just to deal with? Yeah, it's there's a reason everybody you watch him play last year, nobody can get him down. He's just bigger, stronger, and faster, and he understands the game, and he's uniquely different. And uh, Frank's that way in his own way, right? Frank's not – doesn't have the girth of that. Frank's slippery. Where Toon is slippery, strong, powerful, and now we know he'll jump you too. So, I mean, he's got, he's got every trick in the bag. That 360 or whatever that thing's called, I don't know. I've never done that. But whatever that thing's called, holy Jiminy Cricket. Poor Lecce. I mean, I mean, Lecce wasn't there to make a great play. Hocus Pocus Dominocus, that dude's in the end zone. What a great game. I bet y'all had a great time if you were not rooting for the Roadrunners. I enjoyed it for sure. Uh, last one for you. Thanks, Sam. Uh, you don't know, root for the Roadrunners? Thanks. <laughs> Poor JJ. JJ, you know, JJ. JJ's sick for years, and you <laughs> had a great time. I, I enjoyed that one. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I know everybody in the Alamo Dome was tortured that night, uh, that day. Thanks. Uh, in attention. Tortured, you probably you probably go home to singing all about the cougars. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Uh, last one for me. What'd you learn about your team? I, I, I know you know you know a lot, and and this is not last year's team, but 
I felt like you had to come away with with a few things that that really solidify either solidified or maybe answered some questions coming coming into the fall. Uh, my returning players played exactly like I thought they would. Uh, my new players uh, probably exceeded my expectations. I mean, the way Nick Fortune played, the way Joe Evans played, the way Pig Cage played, the way Vinley played, the way Trey Smith played. Uh, and I'm probably leaving out a few. Oh, how about Jared Sackett? I mean, we made some really nice additions to our team, right? And I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, and I apologize for that. Um, my veteran guys, you know, they might have wanted it too much. You know, they might have just wanted it too much almost. Uh, they really want to do this for the city. I mean, they they knew how much this meant to our city, and uh, they probably wanted it too much. We might we might have got a little emotional, and uh, didn't stay true to ourselves. They wanted to please the community so much. Hey, Greg, you want to wrap this up? Yeah, Jeff, I wanted to ask about uh, Donya Taylor and what you saw from his game. It seemed like he played a lot more than we'd seen previously in his time here, and I was wondering if anything about his performance jumped out to you. Yeah, that gets back to JJ's questions about too many, you know, packages. You know, you got to do that kind of stuff to get all those kids on the field, um, and you got to get him on the field. But do y'all want me to put, you know, Day-Day on the bench to play Donya? No, y'all want us to use our brains, right, and, and get those kids out there together. And, man, did he show up and play. I mean, that kid is a really good football player. Uh, he loves football, man. And uh, those two kids, I wish on the field when when Dadrian got hurt, I don't know if y'all saw that exchange at all, but, I mean, he is in a lot of pain. And Donye, just like a brother would, is like just getting all over him for laying on the ground, and he's screaming at him. And Dadrian's like, man, coach, get him away from me. Just shut him to shut up. So I'm literally separating the two Taylor boys fighting in the middle of the field because Donye wants him off the turf. Adrian's trying to get his breath so he can get off the turf. Those two kids are special, man. If I had a hundred of them, I'd never lose a ball game. How has he uh, kind of changed, developed, or grown as a player from last year to be able to take on an expanded role like this where you feel like you have to find a home for him in the defense? He's growing up. I mean, he's growing up. I imagine Adrian was a lot like him before I got here. Uh, I don't know that because uh, when I got here, Adrian and I went out at like, you know, like cats and dogs. And uh, now Dadrian Taylor, you know, he, he's my guy, right? And he's basically the assistant coach to Coach Donye. And uh, I tease Dadrian all the time, like, what am I going to do when you're gone? Like, how am I going to handle Donye? And he's like, he'll be fine by then, Coach. Just give me one more year with him. So, man, those are special kids. I know they have a little bit of a different body type. Donye is a little bit bigger. But do they play similarly? Are there things you see that they have in common? They just love football, man. They're totally reckless. Uh, they understand the game. They played, you know, they played so much football at Shiner. And uh, man, they, they're they're freaking awesome. JJ, it's back. <laughs> yeah, JJ. It's the lights are out of Georgia. We missed out on this last week. We we took some bets on it. At Gummit Kyle. Just when we think we're a real program, we just go away that quick i guess we're not built to last jj yeah i, I even, got, turned, I got, I I even got, turned the lights on a few minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> God, bcd baby culture pillar violation we're gonna get patrick on that jj you, you can you can close it out <laughs> jeff uh just how did you how did the guys react yesterday when you guys got together and then uh, how do you not let this one loss you're talking to the head coach as well now. I mean, I got to get my own self back up and going again for these kids' sake. Man, I, you know, you're right. You got to be careful. But I did not sense that in any way. Uh, they understand their Army's coming off a loss, and we both are. Our kids understand it's two teams that really take great pride in playing harder than the other team, right? Uh, so we, we know what we're in for. We understand we're going to their environment. We understand it's going to be a packed house and they're going to have extra juice and we're going to have to supply our own juice, right? So we, we know what we're in for. Um, but I don't think, Lord forbid, we lose another tough one. I, I don't think that you're going to be able to say that's the reason why. I think if, if, if it doesn't go well, you're playing a very good football team. 
Uh, I believe with all my soul, the Roadrunners are going to show up Saturday and give another great effort. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate y'all. Birds up.